the body mm. is a nitract infection. infection. Yes. So is a is a UTI viral? Is it bacterial? Mm. Is it fungal? Majorly, it's bacterial. Mm -hmm. It's not a viral. Mm. Uh, UTI is uh, mostly caused by bacteria. Uh, one is called the Escherichia coli, uh -huh. or commonly abbreviated as E. coli. Uh -huh. It can be caused by Proteus. Uh -huh. It can be caused by Chlamydia, uh -huh. or and other bacteria. Uh -huh. Yes, once they get into <laughs> the U UTI, I mean into the nitrate system, uh -huh. they can cause an inflammation, or they can cause a disease as such, uh -huh. and cause what in general we term as a UTI. So these UTIs, who is who is at danger? Anybody, as long as you're predisposed to the organism, mm. or you are predisposed to any activity which puts you at risk mm. of getting that bacteria, you get a disease, irrespective of the age mm. and sex. Mm. Though women are at higher risk of uh, having UTIs compared to the men, mm. Mm, for the reasons we shall give later. Mm. What are the symptoms? How do I know I have a UTI? How do you know you have a UTI? This, in the first case, will depend mm. on which part of the urinary tract system is affected. Mm. One, because if it is the kidneys affected, mm. then you may develop some pain around the upper back because our kidneys are found at the back. At the back yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, I in case the UTI has affected that particular part of the body, then you may feel such kind of, mm. you may have that symptom. Mm. Secondly, you may have nausea, mm. general body weakness, general body pain, mm. and others, but based on where the infection is at a particular mm. time. Yet, if it is in the bladder, and maybe yeah, around the bladder, you may have feel some lower abdominal pain. You feel pain which may uh, sometimes radiate to the back, mm, mm. but it is just a result of the UTI have. Then if it is in the urethra, you feel pain while passing out urine, mm. uh, some burning sensation as such. You may have a discharge, mm. a white discharge, pass out on face of urine with a bad smell, mm. or you may pass out turbid urine or mm. cloudy as mm. such. Sometimes the urine could be Coca-Cola color. So all d those are signs and symptoms, mm. yes. But it could depend on which part of the urinary tract system is affected. Mm. Mm. So when, um, when someone comes to a hospital and uh, you're going to start doing their investigations, mm -hmm. can a UTI be found in blood? Can, can, can it be found in stool? Mm -hmm. Can it be found in urine? Mm -hmm. what, what, what examination is done? Now, for UTIs, mm. the principal test or the principal sample that we would go for is urine. Mm. Because we are talking about the urinary tract, tract. infection, mm. which is actually getting its name from the word urine. Mm. So w our major sample will be a urine sample. Mm. That's majorly where we are going to look. Though sometimes we go further to pick even other samples, like we can choose to go and pick a high vaginal swab mm. and make a gram stain and we look at it or even do culture on the sample. Mm. But in circumstances where these bacteria have overgrown and maybe penetrated the tissues and gotten into blood, mm. then you could get what we call the bacteremia. Mm. These bacteria can get into blood. Yes. From, from the urine yeah, from the urine. The There's blood. a possibility after inflaming, uh, the lining mm. of the area where they are, they could penetrate into the tissues and definitely into the blood and mm. get into the blood circulation. Oh. Yes, so there's that possibility. So at the same time, we can still see the bacteria in the blood. Okay, when that the, the specific b bacteria are present yes. in the blood, yes. you can still... Uh, uh, you can still s know if there is a UTI. No, the actually, we don't do a blood test to diagnose a UTI. No, I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying, if, mm. if, if, if those bacteria that cause the UTIs mm. 
a found present mm. in a person's blood. Mm. Can you use that as a spark of that maybe this person has a UTI? Actually, by the time it gets into the blood, oh, that is a severe UTI. Mm. And by the way, it is very, very dangerous when these bacteria cross into the blood. Mm. Those are severe states. When these bacteria get into the blood, mm. it is more serious, mm. very, very serious indeed. So it is even a rare case that mm. these bacteria get because before it gets there, mm. you'll be discomforted mm. and definitely you have thought help getting that. Mm. Yeah. So these are rare cases where these bacteria like the E. coli, mm. uh, proteas and Klebsiella penetrate the tissue and definitely get and into get blood. blood. Yeah, but that possibility cannot be ruled out. Mm. Yes. So for how long can, can someone say if if I got the infection, mm. for how long can I live with it before the symptoms or any discomforts come come up come along mm. for me to to go to a hospital? That is subjective mm. to individuals, mm. and there is no specific time that we can say that uh, at uh, either three or four days a month. That's when somebody will get symptoms. Mm. But as long as there is an, irrit an irritation, mm. you know, most of the times we recognize these signs and symptoms when these bacteria have multiplied enough, mm. invaded uh, maybe a bigger area of our body mm. and it caused some substantial inf inflammation mm. that causes some pain or itching that we feel. But you may feel some mild and uh, minimal signs and symptoms which could be ignored. Mm. Because like uh, I always get clients coming and telling me I had maybe somebody had some sexual intercourse with somebody but I'm feeling some mild itching. I don't know whether I could have gotten a UTI from this person. Mm. You know, but as the invasiveness goes on as these bacteria multiply because mm. these bacteria multiply at a very high rate. Mm. You may find that for them, they need the seconds, not a month. They need the seconds to multiply for the cells to divide. Mm. So when the cells divide and then the invasion is gross mm. and there is a, a, a high level of inflammation, that's when we begin feeling the mm. signs and symptoms. But does not mean that before that point came in, that there was no bacteria in your body? Mm. Mm. It was that's, that's what I was even going to ask. Mm. Uh, at what rate do, do let's say, bacteria or fungus or, or viruses, at what rate do they multiply? Because mm -hmm. you, you, you could find someone who do a test today mm -hmm. and then let's say they'll tell you have 10 to 15 epithelial cells. Mm -hmm. eh? And then after four weeks, mm -hmm. they tell you you have numerous, or mm -hmm. let's say after four days, they tell you have numerous epithelial cells. Mm -hmm. So the rate at which they multiply, how can it be? No, they multiply at a very high rate mm. because these cells really divide at a very high rate. Mm. They need seconds, not hours. They don't need months for the cells to replicate mm. or to divide. Because how these cells grow, they just divide. Mm. Mm. It, it divides in two parts and the other part becomes a bacteria on its own. And the other part also gets into another independent bacteria on its own. Mm. So the rate of division is very high. You get today to the hospital and you could have, just like I've said, you have a few parcels or white blood cells as such. But by tomorrow when you get there, you have greater than 100 per mm. field. Yes. Mm. Because the rate of multiplication is very high. high. Yes. Mm. Mm. So what do these things feed on? Oh. I would ask, because <laughs> I mean, why would a bacteria come into my body? What does it feed on? Just like How does it thrive in my body? Just like you feed on food for your survival, even these organisms, mm. they also feed one. Some organisms in the body, they feed on blood. Mm -hmm. Some organisms feed on other body fluids. Mm. And our bodies have sugars, glucose. Mm. So they also enjoy that glucose. It is food 
to both them. for the body and even to them. Can't they get it outside our bodies? Sorry? Can't they get it outside our bodies? They can't get it out of the body, but they need that optimal temperature, which is mm. produced by our body for them to survive. Mm. It could be too harsh outside for them to survive. That's why you see that, for for example, an HIV virus, it cannot survive outside the living cell. Mm. The moment it is outside the living cell, it will die immediately. So it needs to be inside your body and inside the living cell. Mm. It, your body provides the optimal conditions that it needs for it to survive. Wow, interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, when we look at UTIs, at times we cannot, uh, we cannot run away from candidiasis or candida, mm -hmm. like people call it. What is candidiasis? By the sometimes people misinterpret candida. They think candida is a, a UTI. Mm -hmm. But Kanda is not a UTI. Okay. No, as much as not far different from the okay. UTI. Yeah. Uh, we say the bac these bacteria which are causing majorly the UTIs, but mm -hmm. when it comes to Candida, it caused by fungus and mainly the yeasts. So candiasis is an invasion mm -hmm. of your body with the yeast cells or the fungus as such. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, still in this case, just like we said uh, that women, still even in the case of candidiasis, the they are at a higher risk, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this doesn't mean that men don't suffer from UTIs or don't suffer from candidiasis. They do. Mm. But women are at higher chances. They are, they, they are at high risk. Why? By the way, somebody is asking why before you get the rest. Mm. Somebody needs to know why are we saying women? Why? anatomically how we are created mm. it gives we men an advantage of not easily uh, contracting such infections because you may find that uh, these two are related to person hygiene and in this case I'm not saying women are not <laughs> hygienic, okay? I think they are more hygienic <laughs> than the men. Yes, if, mm, if it is true, mm -hmm. because <laughs> I think it is personal. It is exactly, it is, personal. it is on a personal mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. But generally, I may defend women. Women always want to look cute, to look beautiful, so they always care about their look mm -hmm. compared to men. I'm one of those culprits who doesn't mind whether I see me or my face with a never seen not. Actually. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> yes, natural, naturally, I just bathe and walk. Mm, I don't apply any cosmetic on my body. Mm. So when God was creating a man, he knew some of these things men wouldn't. Yeah, but uh, women pay much attention to how they look, mm. to their hygiene compared mm. to men. That's a fact. Mm. Yes, but now we go to these bathrooms, uh, to the toilet. Some are used communally and we mm. don't know what's been there. And uh, for us men, if I'm going to pass out urine, I will stand and then urinate mm. and pass out my urine. And then for women, you need to get down squat, which brings you closer to mm. either the, the toilet or the infant. And that splashing, they have a spilling back of mm. the urine into your private parts and they carry along with either the those fungus or the bacteria. Mm. So one that puts you at high risk mm. of getting the infections compared to men, mm. that's one. Then secondly, when you talked about this bacteria like the E. coli, E. coli is mainly found in the GIT, the gastrointestinal system, system, the GIT system. Uh, that's the one which is responsible for stool. Because these are enterobacteriaceae or organisms which are found in the GIT. Mm. So how do they again easily get into the urinary tract system? system? Now, anatomically for women, you'll find that uh, the anus and then the urethra are close to each other. The distance is small. Mm. So there are high chances of those organisms easily crossing okay. from the anus to the okay. side and then you get a UTI. UTI. Yes, mm. that's one. Then other predisposing factors now like uh, it is common in women who are pregnant mm. because of hormonal changes. Mm. Yeah. 
hormonal changes will produce predispose you to <laughs> easily getting uh, infections now like antidiasis because mm. uh, when there is an increment in uh, some hormones like oestrogen mm. uh, then it makes your body prone to getting this infection by the way when we talk about these organs like, like antidiasis these fungus or the fung the, the, these fungus mm. we stay with them mm. normally uh, they are all over our body in the mouth, in the mm. GIT, in our private parts, they are there. But when do they become a disease? Mm -hmm. They become a disease when there is an overgrowth. Mm -hmm. Because we have bacteria and the fungus on our bodies. Mm. But they control each other. They regulate. Mm. The bacteria regulate the growth of the fungus, even the fungus regulates the growth of the bacteria. So they keep themselves naturally at a level which is not bad, which cannot cause a disease. But should they be a, a circumstance where there is any overgrowth of mm -hmm. the other, like a most likely an overgrowth of candida, that's when we get the candidiasis. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now when it comes to women, because you always want to take, be concerned about your health, sometimes you make mistakes, mm -hmm. like uh, what you call dodging. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You sometimes want to clean most especially your private part using some detergent, some fumes. Mm. So when you do that, mm. you may kill or remove much yeah, of the bacteria. bacteria, yes. So when you leave the fungus probably alone, then you have created an imbalance which result into the overgrowth of the other and definitely you have mm. candidiasis. Mm. Another factor which may lead to that is uh, use mm. or misuse of the antibiotics. Because when you use these antibiotics so much, they will kill the bacteria. Mm. That means the, the other so imbalance, the yes, the uh -huh. right? so there will be mm. a surge in the growth of the fungus and definitely get candidiasis. Mm. Another factor is to do with the, the immune system. People mm. who are immune compromised.
looking for a place to professionally learn and master beauty, cosmetology, hairdressing and cutting, go to Jefferson's Bridal Academy. We offer intensive training and internship for both students and adults. Call us now on 0776-766-268, Jefferson's Bridal and Beauty Academy. Exceptional and professional. You're watching Rest TV. Welcome back from that short break. And before we take a break, we were looking at uh, natural remedies or treatments we can use at home to clear or to treat UTIs and candidiasis. And we said when we come back, we're going to be looking at the medical bit of it. How can we treat it? Doctor, how long does, um, does it take for someone to get treatment or to be on, on a treatment course for, for UTI or candidiasis? It depends on the severity of the infection. Mm. Uh, the how long it will be on treatment will depend on how severe the infection is and secondly the treatment you'll get also de it depend depends on yes so we shall not give treatment on tv <laughs> because we have not diagnosed anybody and we don't want anybody outside there to hear this mm. and then run very fast to the drug shop and like i want a b c d no mm. first go see your doctor the doctor will assess you see how severe the infection is and yeah, appropriate. The doctor will prescribe for you what is best for you, based on your condition. Mm. Mm. So that's what is going to happen. So for those watching us, we are not going to give treatment on TV. That's the first case. But how long it depends for somebody to get treatment, it will depend on how severe your infection is. Some people may take for a short period of time, and others will take long. But that will be upon the doctors. Recommendation. recommendation after assessing you and knowing that you need this for ABCD. Mm. You may probably need to be given IVs mm. or injections as such. You may be given tablets by the doctor who determine and in discussion with you. Okay. Mm. Why don't men want to take treatment for UTI? For uh, actually, let me say for infections. I'm not aware about that. Because uh, mm. I, I have done some little research and you'll find most times uh, if a woman has an infection and she comes to a medical facility and mm. they, are, they are treated and they are told, you know what, you have this infection, ABCD, mm -hmm. uh, these are the medicines you need. Tell your partner to come to a medical facility or to go to a medical facility, get checked out and take this medication. Most of them report saying, ha, uh, now that is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. That person is not going to get, is not going to go, or they live in, beat me, or they live in. Why mm -hmm. don't men believe that they also need to get treated? Actually, I don't think that it is men as such. Or particular individuals. But this is on particular individuals. Because I'm a man, mm -hmm. and I don't find any difficulty if somebody called me upon to go for a medical checkup. Mm -hmm. I will easily run. Yeah, because you're a doctor. No, but I've seen even some who are not doctors. Mm. But this on an individual basis. Mm. But men out there, if it is true that that's what you do, then I call you upon to always and always endeavor to go for medical checkup. Mm. And most of it is your wife is calling you upon to go for medical checkup. Why can't you go? Mm. One, it will be the confidence between two of you as a couple. Mm. Because if you're my wife and I request that we go for a medical checkup and you hesitated, it will bring a number of questions in my heart. Uh -huh. 
I could be suspicious you're not honest enough, you're not faithful. Mm. But if you really you are, mm. why would you hesitate to go with me? Mm. I feel it would be merry making when we receive our negative results mm -hmm. mm, mm. and we share, have mine, have yours. You see, they're all negatives. There's mm. some bonding it creates. Mm. It builds trust and brings a stronger bond that you may not know. Mm. So men out say there, why can't you do that? Well, I don't know. Mm. I, I don't to know. Me, I hope they, they are uh, hearing that. I just feel it is romantic enough. <laughs> <to> <laughs> the doctor says it is romantic. Yes. To get treated <laughs> and to get checked. So please do. Yes. So doctor. Yes. In the instance that you, you'll find in a home, Mm -hmm. uh, let's say there are children and uh, maybe you're using a bathroom or a, a washroom as a family mm -hmm. but you have your own and you'll find that these young children keep getting uh, recurrent infections mm -hmm. yeah how do you help a child because at times it is you who it's you who bathes the child you endeavor to clean by mm -hmm. the weekly cleaning um, the washrooms, uh, the bathrooms, you scrub them with all these necessary detergents and mm. all that. But you find the infections are around there in the family or mm. in the home mm. and they're not going away. What, what brings that recurrent? Now, this is infections. Mm. Mm. What are you exactly referring to? Because infection is general. Okay, the, the UTIs. The, I'm t looking at the UTIs. Because mm. uh, you can find mm, this, this, this kid and, you know, at first... When we were growing up, we we used to think UTIs are infections that are mainly for women and women who have sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you find a young child have uh, going to a hospital and they, you know, the child has. They say the child does not have malaria. The child does not have typhoid. Mm -hmm. The child does not have this. Let's check the child's urine. Mm -hmm. And on checking the child's urine, they tell you your child has a UTI. Mm -hmm. So you. You would keep wondering, because even now I believe there are people who still have that mentality. Mm. And you're wondering, how can my child have a UTI? Mm. How? How does it happen? So wha what brings that in mm. the children? Would, it, would we say maybe their immunity is too low or something? <laughs> Th that's one of them, but just like we said, yeah. hygiene is key in many these infections. Mm. So you, you need to keep good hygiene now for these children even when you are not sharing the bathrooms or the toilets with them mm. it doesn't mean in their toilets they cannot get infected mm. no that's not true and secondly these children of ours they are always playful mm -hmm. because we do not only get these infections from the toilets mm. as such mm. but even outside where they play from mm. they sometimes sit down uh, without to punch even sometimes because mm. they are kids they don't know what uh, the effect could be the outcome mm. so one as a parent you also need to monitor how do your children play and who they play with mm. that's important mm. apart from only maintaining your toilets clean mm. what about outside because you don't just keep them locked inside uh, mm. the house. They move out and who they interact with, what they interact with, where they play with, I mean from, and what they play with also matters. Mm. So you need to keep a keen eye on everything if you keep the children free from such infections. Mm. Mm. So in, 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 in the case uh, someone has come to a hospital, mm -hmm. How do you, how, because you, you said uh, we have these bacteria and fungus living on our bodies. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how does it get to the mouth? How does it get oral, you know? Yeah, that, that uh, oral. Uh, how, we get in, how we get infections, mm. by the you talked about oral candidiasis. Mm -hmm. Candiasis can also be in different, uh, just like you talked, yeah, mm. and just like you said, the oral candiasis, that's the candiasis we find in the mouth. Mm. If it is on your private parts, like the vagina, that's we call the vaginal candiasis. Mm. And any other part of the body, it can be there. It's not restricted only there, mm. but it can be any part of the body, in the eye, in the nose, in the intestines, anywhere. On the feet, on the mm. body, the ones we call ringworm, all those are funguses. Mm. Mm. Yes. So it can be any part of the body. Mm. 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 So 
what 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 how would you tell because you see at times people get um what do they skin skin uh skin infections mm. i would say maybe let me call them skin infections but mm. that is something else altogether you'll see something like a ringworm patch mm. or um what is uh what is this thing called? What is Olumu? What Olumu. is Olumu, Olumu called? That's in ringworm. It's ringworm. Mm. Then there's that ringworm patch, and it keeps growing. It keeps growing, mm. and even when someone uh, maybe applies medicine they've been given from in the hospital and all that, mm. it keeps growing and it keeps growing. Now mm. my question is: At some point, are these things chronic? No, they're not chronic as such. But uh, in some cases of real carrying, because mm. there's a possibility that these fungus or these infections mm. will reoccur, mm. because they have microscopic spores mm. which cannot be seen with the naked eyes. Mm. Mm? I get that. And uh, most times, when we take this medication, we take the medication will work on the vegetative part but of it this it's fungus. It's been predisposed. Mm? No. Mm. These fungal infections or the fungus itself, mm. I th it exists majorly two forms. Mm. We have the spore form mm -hmm. and then the vegetative form. Mm. I don't know how best I can break it down. But now the the spore forms like a capsule. It has a capsule mm. which is hard, which can not be easily penetrated by the the, the, the medicine by the or medicine. the drug as mm. such. Mm. It is resistant to harsh mm. temperature high temperatures so it can really stand has conditions mm. but the moment it germinates mm. or oh, it turns out into what you call the vegetative form uh, the one who's wish we sometimes we see causing now the infection mm. Mm. that is when it can be easily worked on but the spores are resistant and they could even be resistant to some drugs mm. so the reason for it reoccurring is that when you treat and probably the vegetative part is done away with but spores remain mm. they may germinate in if we so your treatment state has like to that. target treating the spores yes that's why it mm. may not be specific on that mm. that's why we always advise people that irrespective of what you know it is advisable to go and seek guidance from a doctor. doctor. Fine. There are many creams, tablets, mm. injections to deal with the fungus. But these fungal infections are categorized, they have different types. types. Yes. Mm. Ringworm is different from mm. oral candidiasis. Mm. Are you getting that? Mm. The treatment you would take for the ringworm is not the same. Mm. Are you getting that? Mm. And it's not it wouldn't be the same that you the doctor would possibly prescribe for you for vaginal candidiasis. Mm. So it is better you can seek advice from a doctor. The doctor will look at what your problem is or if you have a ringworm and it will be at a proper position to see how best to help you. To help you. We can even have fungal infection of the nails. Mm, I've yes. seen people that have nails that yes. fall out. Yes, sometimes they break, they become hard, they have lines. Mm. Uh, when you have fungal infection, your nails, your fingernails become brittle. Mm. They can break in time mm, and hard. And can be deforming. Mm. You get these fingernails deformed. Mm. So what will you do? Mm. Seek Save guidance from a doctor. Mm. Yes. Don't look at what a neighbor used. Mm. You say I had the fungal infection and they used the ABC. I, I was given this car cream. No, 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 no. So you can't buy it. There are many creams with the different contents Content. that are in. Yeah, there are many mm. different ingredients. I mean, the active ingredients in those tubes mm. that we call tubes. Those medicines mm. for different diseases. So it's better to do everything to apply in a tube on your body on your infection mm. based on the doctor's recommendation. Mm. Mm. Now. Um, I, I think uh, oral candidiasis has symptoms it presents. Yes, right? definitely. How do I differentiate uh, oral candidiasis from, mm. from an ulcer of the mouth? From an ulcer of the mouth. Mm. One, uh, when it is candidiasis, mm. the sores which are in the mouth, they always have, they are always white in color. Mm. Yes? Mm -hmm. They are always, when you look at them, 
they are white in color or they have that white coating or lining then these other sores are reddish but that would be that wouldn't be a conclusive issue you shouldn't simply look at it what if during the process of brushing you brushed off that that white yeah patch. that white patch mm. and remained a little bit red mm. would you conclude no no you wouldn't secondly even the invasiveness of mm. candidiasis is different from a mouth sore because if it's just a mouth sore you may probably find it in one spot of the body or two mm. but for candidiasis you may find it it's spreading here yeah, on the tongue up the and beads. yes so how it, it the invasiveness mm. is more serious compared to the mouth to sore yeah. mm. because you know at times like let me let me say at times there are people who get you get a wound mm. on the mouth mm. and most times okay here in uganda i don't know in the other parts of the world but most times mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that is associated <laughs> till this day beats my understanding. Uh, but I even have uh, <laughs> a message on my WhatsApp here. Somebody sent me a message One and was uh, yes, because yeah. he was telling me I had malaria, mm. and uh, he was he telling me malaria is going through the wound. Just like I said, because I was advising him to go for a medical checkup when he said, "Nene, nene, msawo." Ninebwa. Mm. Ninebwa and at that point, I think they feel they are here. Ninebwa, ebwa liyazi jete gezo msujia kufuru ma That is not true. Msujia te kufuru mida mwuka. You need to get treatment mm. because for malaria, that's a parasite in you. Mm. I need to be, you need to take a treatment and you get rid of that parasite. Mm. But that parasite can't get out of your body through the wound. That's not right. <laughs> So I'd ask, what brings about those those those, those different wound patches people normally have? On their well, it lips could be the just an infection like we've been talking about, or mm. can just it could be a sore. Mm. You sometimes we get bruises when we are brushing. Sometimes mm. accidentally we bite ourselves, and it could be a point of entry of For a certain bacteria. Oh. Yes. Mm. Mm. And then you'll find someone having a serious wound mm. around their mouth. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question here. Mm. Uh, d -d 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 Let me look at those ones we have not looked at. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is, um, what is the best treatment for candidiasis? I think that we have looked at it. Uh huh. How does candida look like on the skin? How does candida look like on, on the, the skin? skin? If 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 I have um, if I have a wound, let's say if I have a wound, if I have uh, an infection and it's on the skin, candida is on the skin. Mm -hmm. How does it look like? Does it div look different from a ringworm mm -hmm. or a s an irritated skin? Mm -hmm. Actually, we cannot say how does candida look on the skin mm -hmm. <laughs> because Candida is mostly is commonly affects the uh, what can I say? Enclosed candidiasis. Mm. When we talk about candidiasis specifically, mm. it always affects our genitalia mm. for such like most especially for women. For women. And the the citrate, you know, the species which is common for causing candidiasis mm. or vaginal candidiasis. Mm is the candida albicans mm. finally you can have oral candidiasis mm. and that's we are we discussed how it appears but on the skin mm. we cannot say that we have skin candidiasis mm. no and that's not right but we have a fungal infection mm. ah, fungal infection yes that's mm. a fungal infection because candidiasis is caused by ht cells mm. so there are many types of fungus mm which affect different parts of the body and that present with different signs and symptoms mm. yes we have different species of candidiasis like we talked about the ht cells mm. we have those which affect the fingernails we have that of the hair mm. are you getting that mm. so it is not all called candidiasis mm. uh, no those are just some i think skin infections yes okay how how often should someone go back for review you know most times uh, they tell people you come back 
uh, when your medicine is done or come back for review and people normally dodge that mm. so when when i have a uti let me say and i come to a hospital and i am treated mm. what chances are there that the treatment will clear out all what again that question what i have a uti mm -hmm. i come to the hospital mm. and i get treated mm -hmm. yeah and after i get treated how many times should i come for a review mm. or what are the chances that the treatment i am given the first time mm. and i am keeping my hygiene clean and all that what are the chances that the treatment i am given will clear out all the, the infection mm. at a go or should i come back after the treatment to get retested and still given another dose of treatment or not mm. Now, when you, you expect it to come back, that is subjective. Mm. When the doctor may determine how often or when mm. you do come back mm. based on the severity of your condition. Mm. If you need to be reviewed mm. Im immediately or in a short period of time, mm. then the doctor will tell we'll you to do it. so. Mm. If he, the doctor feels you are better and you don't need to come back early mm. based on his assessment then we so there is no specific time that should be given to individual that all people should be coming back for review in such a particular time mm. no that's but there's if no i'm a patient and i feel i want to go back for a checkup it's okay. you're, you're very okay you can come you can go and see a doctor at any time as long as you're not feeling well mm. yes you feel free to explain to your doctor mm. whatever your discomfort is. Mm. Yes, mm. that's true. Then you said, what is the possibility that that the treatment you're given will flush out all? Yeah, when we give you treatment, or when the doctor. No, that's another. Not misconception. where and then, but okay. <laughs> what I was saying <laughs> that maybe let's say I'm given a treatment for five days. Mm. Uh, after the treatment of that five days, should I assume that now my body is free, and infection free? Yes, mm. and that's also what I presume that mm. after you taking the treatment as prescribed mm. and as told, you you'll be free mm. at the end of the dose. Mm. Mm. If I give you the treatment you're supposed to take for five days, I expect. But after those five days, unless otherwise, mm. maybe if you get reinfected, that's another thing. Mm. Uh, maybe if you don't add the hair to what I've told you to do and mm. you don't take treatment as advised to, that's mm. another challenge. Mm. But again, there is a possibility for some other people who have probably misused or overused some drugs, some drugs. Mm. where there are cases of uh, drug resistances. Mm. I could prescribe to, to you some treatment, but uh, you may not respond to the treatment. Why? Because mm. you became resistant. Or the organism, the bacteria, or mm. the fungus you have, became resistant to a certain mm. drug. Mm. So in such cases, we need to do a drug sensitivity, probably, or the doctor will prescribe for you some mm. other drug, different from what he had yeah. given you yeah. before, in case you don't respond to the treatment mm. given to you earlier. So I'm thinking it's also equally important for at least a patient or any person to have certain things at the back of their minds. Mm -hmm. If I go to a hospital and I have been taking, let's say, PCM or mm -hmm. paracetamol more, all the time, all the time, mm -hmm. I should notify the person I am seeing, the medical person I am seeing. You know what? Actually, those are the, some mm -hmm. of the things when we interact with the patient. With the patient. Yes. But you know some of them don't know. Don't, but what we, if you don't know, because not everybody will know. Mm. But this is what I always advise my clients to do. Mm. When you're going to see a doctor, and most especially a doctor you have never met before, you're going to see a, doc a new doctor, you're going to a hospital you have never been, probably they don't have any of your records. Mm. It is always prudent to carry along with your previous, previous medical documents. Because the doctor will have to look through, see probably what you were diagnosed with, mm. which treatment you've been taking mm. for how long, mm. and then see whether you're improving or mm. not. Mm. The doctor will, based on that, either to continue with the same medication or to change. To change. Mm. Because you, what you stated is very true. Mm. Not everybody knows that mm. I've been taking chlorophenicol. Mm. Not everybody can pronounce that word. Some people completely have no idea. They'll tell you I take 
there was given a white tablet. Uh, a white tablet. Mm. Mm, it was in a blue pack. In a blue pack. Uh -huh. And yet <laughs> the packaging keeps changing. Yes, the, blue mm. the, the packaging keeps changing. So when you're going to see a doctor and you've been visiting another doctor, it is good always to color wrong with your, your medical history. documents. Mm. Yeah, because the doctor will have to look at your history. Mm. And they know how to manage you better, either to continue or to make some changes. And I think it also helps them better. Because... Mm. I mean, why would you start me on, on a treatment my body is resistant to? Yes. Other than going to something better. And sometimes we, w sometimes we end up doing the same things which were done. Mm. Like for investigations. You could have been tested for malaria and the malaria was not there mm. Mm, yesterday. And then you come to me without any document. So I may take you through the same process. And if it is places mm. where you're paying then you keep paying money for the same thing which could not even be relevant at such a time. Mm. So it is good for you to carry along with your documents. Okay. Mm. It saves time in the yeah, first case it and it saves does. money. It does save time, money and uh, I would say even the um, psychological torture that comes or trauma that comes along with it. You know, mm. going to a hospital and you're given treatment, the same treatment and you're not getting better is really frustrating. Yes, frustrating. Very frustrating. And equally frustrating to us, the yes, clinicians. Because who are you would wonder, what am I not doing? Exactly. Right? <laughs> why, I maybe did I miss out on this bit in school mm -hmm. when they were talking about recurring <laughs> <laughs> symptoms and illnesses, you know? <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, our time has moved quite so fast, and um, I think we cannot take it on from here. But, Doctor, in a few words, one or two, give us closing remarks, mm. and maybe what we should look up to in uh, 2020. 2020, I believe, is going to be a healthy year. Mm -hmm. I believe our viewers, including us, we mm. are going to be more healthy. Mm. I really don't want to see you sick because in these topics, we keep discussing by the end of the year we shall be at a, a better place to position to maintain our bodies healthy clean mm. and some of these infections that we get out of uh, not maintaining our hygiene properly social behaviors mm. i believe we shall be rid of them we shall be at a better place to position to be healthy people enjoy our lives mm. free from disease and spend less, you know, one of the factors which are making people not develop so fast is health. Mm. We, we spend a lot of money in the hospitals, the money which we would use to invest mm. and to do a number of things that would help our lives. But we keep taking this, like I said, mm. kids to hospitals, infection every time. But you will continue taking them to the hospital, infection, infection, if you don't mind about who they play with, mm. what they are eating, mm. uh, where they are sleeping, uh, where they are bathing from. You know, some of those things which we should really take notes about. Mm. So I wish you a happy new year 2020. Thank you for watching us today. Have a blessed day. Thank you very much, Doctor. The Bible says my people perish due to lack of knowledge and understanding. And I think being ignorant is very, very bad. So it's very important for us to keep learning these things and know. And that way we are going to save not only our health, but save our money. Imagine the money you would use that you, you use spending in a hospital, you would use for something else, else. So I encourage us, let's keep watching, keep getting knowledgeable of these things, and we live a better life. We love you, and thank you very much.